Welcome to part two of Isotopes 2. I hit the wrong button, so now I get to upload two videos. Anyways, let's uh, let's start. All right, so we've got three problems we're gonna do. Here's problem one of three, and it's two isotopes of, that's a really gross compound up there. That's why it's pronounced EU. It's <laughs> good. I didn't make you memorize that element. What is it? Anybody know? Anybody guess? What? I mean, I mean, that wasn't a terrible guess. It kind of sounds like a continent. Europium, it's europium. But anyway, hey, look at what it's giving us for europium. It's giving us two different europium isotopes. We're going to find their percentages. Here we go. Look at your new equation. Let's plug and chug. It says take isotope mass number one, which in this case is 151. That's given to us. And multiply it by x. Now, that x value is going to be what we're looking for, of course, and it's going to represent the decimal version of the missing percentage, right? And then we can turn it into a percentage very easily. Following along, plus, just like we did on Friday, right, we were adding the data sets together, the other isotope mass of 152 times 1 minus x. 1 minus x. Let's see where my extra hard thinkers are. You don't have to understand this, but just for fun. If that is the percentage version of the missing, I'm sorry, the decimal version of the missing percentage, why does it make sense that the other isotope is represented by 1 minus x? I'm sorry? That's not a terrible way to say it. It was way better than what my other class said, which was nothing. He said to find the other part of the percentage. Because we know that any time you have all the percentages of a whole, what do they equal when they're summed? 100%. 100% written as a decimal is 1, which is why if we know this decimal version, and then we apply it here by 1 minus that version, it'll give you the other part, right? Like if this was 0.4, well, 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6, which would be 40 and 60%. Again, if you didn't understand what I just said, not required, but it's nice to know why things are happening. Equals, as the equation says, average atomic mass. Now here's where it's different, because on Friday we were finding this value, but now we are admitting that we have access to the periodic table. So go look it up. What is europium's average atomic mass? 151.97. It's on the crossed out row for those of y'all that can't find it. And by the way, if you hate that crossed out row, you can come replace it with a new table. If you want to come grab a new table, they are up there. And there it is. We have set up the beginning of our problem. Now we just have to simplify and solve. So here we go, check it out. 151 times x is 151x. Bring down the plus sign. What mathematical concept is gonna happen there? The distributive property, very good. Yeah, we're gonna distribute the 152 to everything in there. So 152 times 1 is 152, and 152 times negative x is negative 152x. Everybody okay there? All right. And then I'm just going to bring down the rest of the stuff. Yeah. 
And now we can simplify further. Now, I'm going to say this, because even though you, I know that you know it, but as we combine like terms, right? That's fun. Anytime the terms that you are combining are on the same side of the equality, you do whatever the operation says. If you're having to combine terms that are on opposite sides of the equality, then you do the opposite sign, right? Because you're trying to remove it from a side. Here's what I just said. You see how the x's, the x um, parts of the equation, expressions, are on the same side of the equality? That means you do what the sign says, which is this minus that. So I'll rewrite it for us, all right? So I just moved this down. This minus this is what? Negative 1x. I'm just going to write that as negative x. You can put the 1 there if it makes you sleep better. But yeah, that minus that equals that. You can type it into the calculator if you're bad at integers. All right, so that ultimately got rid of him. I'm going to bring down my equal sign. And then I want to combine the non-x terms, which are on opposite sides of the equality, meaning I do the opposite sign. So this was plus 152. So to move it over, yeah, we'll go minus 152, which again gets rid of it from that side and moves it over here. One fifty one point nine seven minus one hundred and fifty two is negative point oh three. Now I heard some weird answers out there that I got last class too because y'all aren't as good at doing that in your head as you think you are. So use your calculator. You always have it. Now check it out. We solved for x. By the way, if you don't know this. Negative x equaling a negative number is the same thing as positive x equaling a positive number. So, or you could divide by negative 1 on both sides, again, if that makes you feel good. But yeah, negative x equaling negative that is the same as positive x equaling positive that. And boom, we found x, which is the percentage of that first isotope. But it's written as a decimal. How do I write this as a percentage? It's 3%, all right? Again, it's the opposite of what we did Friday. You need to slide the decimal to the right twice or multiply by 100, whichever one you like better. But this 3% is the representation of europium-151. So what's the percentage of the other isotope? 97% because the percentages always add to 100. And boom, if you were to find a random europium, there is a 97% chance that it's europium 152. Let's draw some cards on another example. All right, we've got some SB isotopes for our next example. Um, let's go ahead and be mean right away. Let's go over to cluster two. Let's ask a question to seat six. Hey, two, six. And it doesn't count for your asking. That's not fair. Hey, two, six. What element is SB? The table won't help you. What is SB? Oh, it turns out nobody knew. Y'all, SB was one of the ones that you memorized. It's not tin. It's antimony or antimony if you talk to someone that is um, annoying. It's antimony, you should know that. Anyway, I want you to look at those numbers. Listen for a second. Do you see how it's giving you a value? 
followed by a decimal value. This is called mass defect. This is the idea that sometimes if you were to actually measure subatomic particles, the protons and neutrons wouldn't be whole numbers, all right? Your measuring devices would bring them out to decimals. It's called mass defect. You don't have to know that vocab word. What I need you to know is that if a problem goes through the trouble of giving you a specific, a more specific isotope mass, use that, all right? If they show you the mass defect number, which is gonna have decimals instead of being a whole isotope number, use the more precise numbers. It wants you to do that. So with that said, let's work together again. Let's find the percent abundances that are missing. Starting with the isotope mass one, which is 120.9 times X following my formula. Isotope mass two is 122.9 times one minus X, which will be the difference from 100%. Let's go over to cluster one. Talk to seat five. Hey, one five, can you tell me what is the average atomic mass of antimony? One, two, one point seven six. Um, Nicholas, you are leaving. As promised. One twenty one point seven six, you agree? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. All right, let's start our simplification. 120.9 times X is 120.9 X. Distribute any number times one is itself. Any number times X is itself with an X. Bring down the rest. Combine like terms. The X's are on the same side, so I do what the sign says which is subtract. So I'm going to go minus the 122.9x. What's the difference there, anybody? Negative 2x. The non-x expressions are on different sides of the equality, so I do the opposite function, which is opposite of plus, is subtract. So I'm going to subtract this from both sides. What do you get here? 1.04? 1.14. Sorry, I don't have a calculator up here anymore. Gave it away because y'all are so big. He's on his way. He's on his way. Now, this one requires an extra little step because it's not x equals, but you surely know how to isolate the x, right? The opposite of multiplying there is, yeah, divide both sides by negative 2. All right, and that gives you X equals, what do you get? Now it's 0.57, which I know 
is the same by multiplying by 100, 57%, and the X is always matching to the first view. So it's going to be antimony 121. Let's go over to cluster one and talk to seat one. Hey, one, one, what's the percent abundance of the other isotope? Remember, the two percentages together must equal 100%. 43%. Questions? All right, do one by yourself and we'll call it the end of the unit. Here you go. Prove that you don't need me. Find the missing percent abundances of molybdenum. You got this. You good? Than that. If you, you, gotta, you gotta hang on, man. You gotta hang on. I got somebody out there.
Do anybody want to come say hi to the video before I finish? Come wave. I'm never doing these videos again for honors. So come. No, I have to have because because not everyone agreed to. I, ask everybody if they're okay with it. No, because that because then it's peer pressure. You're gonna be the only one to raise your hand and not be okay with it. Well, you you would be. But. I would not. No, no, no I, you wouldn't be, but you wouldn't mind. Just say yeah. Come say hi. This is Barbie and Ken. Barbie. Yeah. I'm Barbie. I'm Ken. I'm, I'm Alan. I'm upside down. I look funny. So funny. It was. Can you the cowboy hat on? Oh, and you're very proud of your hat. All right, looky, looky for the reveal. You ready? Did you do it correctly? You did not get my percentages. Ask questions or be or follow the work. Positive, you need to.